Bangkok, along the river, the Chopria, which is a port, a, a port, a river port. There are many communities, 43 actually, living along this strip of the river. And the community that we're in at the moment is the Rong Mu community. It's a very extensive area. Um, it, it follows the river, follows, the, um, follows behind the wall of the, of the port pretty well most of the way. Um, and the people come to this area because they hope that they can get work. There are not many children, I don't think, who do not go to school for at least some time. Attendance at school can be very difficult for quite a few of them. My, my mission started <coughs> walking the slums. I used to take uh, maybe one step in and two steps out in, in these long, because when you walk into the little soys, the narrow soys between the houses, you, it felt like you could walk for miles and just keep going. And being totally under, unfamiliar with that environment. I used to find it very difficult to keep on going in. At Makassan, which is a, is a very big um, slum community, and mainly Muslim, there are very big Muslim community there, very poor, at that time anyway. And then a third community, at what's known as Sapan Kwan, which is a community that's almost, but not quite, under the, the Ramanine Bridge. Two things struck me. One was that there were mums trying to feed babies from the breast, breasts that were virtually empty, dry. And then they would be uh, feeding the babies from the ex excess water taken off the rice. When they boil the rice for the family, they take the excess water off it, put some sugar into it, and that's what they were feeding their babies. And so the first real thing that um, struck me as a need was to help these mums. Sam Lo Song, so he's put on nearly a kilo in, in the three weeks. Very good. And look, he's quite happy to be there. These suits have been made by um, a group, a group of ladies that sew many, many things for us, and then, when they get a chance, send them, send them to us. And we got two bags last week. These have come from from Perth, from a, a group of. Elderly, like mainly elderly ladies who, who sew, do these, make these little garments. And a couple of the women, the husbands, help them by going around to the factories and picking up the cut-off pieces that the factory donate to them. I'm a presentation sister from the Western Australian Congregation. There's never a mention of religion. Their need is they are hungry. Their need is that they need to go to school. Their need is that the father, the mother have not had work. There's no, mo there's no money in the house. Therefore, there's no rice. Therefore, they are in need of a donation to help them through the next day, or this day even. And so, money is, is, the, is the thing that we're able to help with most. Donations of money being uh, much more helpful than donations of goods. The young people who are coming now this afternoon, uh, they are already organised, they have a card, and I have um, a page for them in, in the notebook. And so on that page tells me exactly the amount of money that I will give to each, each student personally. 
and every student receives something different because they are traveling on different routes to get to their schools and they travel out to many schools beyond this area here. Many of them are catching four vehicles to get to school. For example, a motorcycle, then a bus, and then uh, a second bus, and then maybe a second motorcycle getting them into the actual school. When I first met her, she was caring for eight children under eight years old. Three families. They were, it came from three families. She's still caring for the eight children, but they're not under eight years old, uh, under eight years now. Some of them are quite big and grown up, but they're still with her in the family. Great lady. This year we probably distributed over 300 uniforms. Last year it was between five and 600 uniforms that we distributed because last year there was no help from the government. This year the government is giving assistance. I walk out into the slums and the children are not in school. Why are you not in school? We have no rice. My mother has no money to allow me to go to school or let me go to school. Um, and so they're at home. We've already paid for uniforms, helped with school fees, helped with books, and they're not in school. So we have to go 100% of the way and contribute to fares and food. The rice program that we have at the moment uh, grew slowly. Beginning of last year, or March of last year, when the price of rice just skyrock skyrocketed to about 150% of its price a week before, lots of people were left riceless. They, ca they can't meet the price of the rice. This is the regular packet that we give out. There's a bottle of uh, oil. Unfortunately, it's not a good oil. Uh, there's a, bo a bottle of fish sauce and there are five cans of sardines. As well as that, we give out uh, one five kilogram bag of rice. That's the basic pack. Now it costs in the vicinity of 200, around 200, 220 baht. 220 baht is in the vicinity of nine do Australian dollars. Most of our funds come from Australia and from the goodness of people who hear what I do, believe in what I'm doing and contribute to it.